Hey, how's everybody doing? DIY yeah, well, Mr. Film Works with Magalos here. This is being filmed right before February 20th. Because February 20th, I'm going down to the New Orleans area for Impact Wrestling TV tapings. So if you happen to be watching Impact, and I'm going to try to get this video up before the first of the tapings goes out. Uh, look for when you're when they're when they're in the ring facing the entrance ramp. I don't know if I'm on the left or right, but second row. There's gonna be a guy who's either gonna have a Mandito mask on or have a bandana around the lower half of his face because you gotta wear a mask there. No, I got no issue with that. I mean, I'm bringing my proof of vaccination, but they want me to wear a mask. I have no issue with that. Hell, I like wearing masks. And I'll have signs. So look out for that. And matter of fact. If you happen to see that and see one of the signs on there, comment on this video and explain the sign. Because so far, the ones that I made are all inside jokes. But this is April 2022, so this came out in January. Collectible Achievement Awards the PW Pro Wrestling Illustrated 2021 PWI Awards with the fans vote. And supposedly the votes are legit. Okay, it comes out nine times a year. I was one. I like this. They made a PWI 500 cover for Lulu Pencil. No idea who the fuck that is. We got all our info. And honestly, yeah, I'm just going to skip ahead to the year. Okay. Rookie of the year. Now, out of all these, I, all the ones that the top four I've seen, Jake Cargo, I've seen Bad Bunny. And both of them are green, but the two, I've seen more matches with Car Cargill, and she was impressed me. I've not seen Braun Breaker yet. I've not seen Brock Anderson. And some of the other ones are Becca, aka basically Becca, who to me should have won. Amazing. Yo Yo, Lady C, and Carly Bravo. Okay, now we got Most Improved Wrestle of the Year. I've been told by multiple people that she, uh, Britt Baker, has improved massively since last time I saw her. I don't know because last time I saw her, her promo skills and her in-ring work just bored me to tears. So I fast forward through just uh, coming in second with 12% tied with the, per the next person is Bobby Lashley. I don't know how much of this is Bobby Lashley's improved or how much of it is people are actually seeing him again because, man, he's an impact for that little that stint there was champ off and on. Was, he was amazing. He was one of the highlights of impact. And then Trevor Murdoch, is it most improved or is it a comeback of the year? Because, you know, he had been wrestling for him and then he was the world champion. Deion Perrazzo, amazing wrestler. All right, we got down to the bottom. Josh Alexander, that's who I probably would have voted for. Raquel Gonzalez, Tay Conte, or Matt Cardona. Ooh, shit. Comeback of the year. Well, CM Punk's going to win this. I mean, it's CM Punk. I'm not a CM Punk fan. Even though I got told recently with my beard and him and I had the exact same color eyes, I look a little bit like him. I'm like, don't tell me that shit. I don't like CM Punk. Sting, okay. Christian Cage, that's cool. Becky Lynch. Uh, Mickey James, Kendo, and Taylor Walker. Well, Taylor come back. Inspirational wrestler of the year. I don't really get what this award is. I mean, I don't. I guess that's because he came back. But Bianca Belair, Biggie, Mickey James, and the ones who didn't get a runner-up spot includes Christian Cage, Kenji, Eddie Kingston, who might have got my vote, or Roxy. Most popular wrestler of the year, CM Punk ass, Adam Page, Biggie, and Bianca Belair. Top voters didn't get a spot were Brian Danielson, Jungle Boy, Adam Cole, and Randy Orton. Uh, anybody have a Punk? <laughs> He's popular. Most hated. Oh, I love it. He ran away with it too, MJF. This guy, oh God. I first saw him in MO. I not this guy's going to be huge. He not only has he got the mic skills, he's good in the ring too. He's, he, oh, okay. Put it this way. My mother does not really watch wrestling. Like, really. It'll be on the TV. She might look up everyone's on. He was in ML, MLW. She was, she paid attention. She used to say, I want to take that star, scarf and strangle him with it. He riled her up so much that at one time before he got to AEW, one of the indie feds in this area had talked about booking him. She was going to come to the show just so she could heckle him. <laughs> like that, she don't give a shit about Russell. Y'all y'all see the videos. My father loves wrestling like I do. All right. Let's say Roman Reigns. Wow. Kenny Omega, Baron Corbin. Other ones are Charlotte Flair, Eve Marie, and the Young Bucks. Oh, the Young Bucks would have had my vote. I don't know. Charlotte Flair, though. I hate Charlotte. Feud of the year. Chris Jericho versus MJF. That was a pretty good little feud. Hey, it got us Nick Gage on Nationwide TV with a pizza cutter. That got me to watch AEW for about four weeks. I'm like, oh, Nick Gage? Who would two Guerrero? And then I'm like, uh, that's still AEW. I still got to sit through stupid young bucks doing Space Jam shit. 
Sasha versus Bianca Belair, great match at WrestleMania. I didn't see anything else from Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa. Didn't see Edge versus Roman Reigns. Didn't see it. Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly. I'm sure that was pretty good. Kenny Omega versus Impact Wrestling. Edge versus Seth Rollins and Matt Cardona versus DC. Matt Cardona versus GCW is a good feud. Independent Wrestler of the Year. Oh yeah, Nick Gage. Nick fucking Gage. But then I like that. Okay, Trisha Dore, who I've not seen a lot of. Oh, uh, but I'm hearing a lot of good stuff. Tony Depp in this fucking great nephew he is too. Uh, Chris Dickinson, Dan Housen, AJ Gray, and Allie Cash. Kind of surprised Dan Housen. Like, Dan Housen has like an amazing fan base. It's, okay, I got in about two years ago now, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, Pro Wrestling Tees does these overstocks. Like five overstock items for X amount. And you're, paying, you're not paying that much, but you don't know what you're going to get. I think I did overstock pins. Well, I live in, you know, I live in the rural deep south. Very religious area. I live in a town that ain't real big, and there's like almost 200 churches. Yeah, it's a very, very religious area, you know. I'm sure they think I'm a Satanist. I'm usually in a black shirt. I'll wear a Halloween, you know, Halloween-themed shirt when it ain't Halloween. I got one on right now. It's February. Well, I got a bunch of Dan Housen pins. I just Dan Housen's face on a fucking pentagram. I can't keep them on the table. Like, they sell that quick. And it ain't just to, like, the wrestlers or the behind-the-scenes people. It's the actual crowd that comes in and pays, you know, pays for a ticket. Blew my mind. Match here, Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa, 317, 22%. Almost got it with 16% on Young Bucks versus Lucha Brothers. Uh, I didn't see them. This is the first one I've seen. This is Bianca, Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks from WrestleMania. Fucking amazing match. When Belair did the hair whip and cut Sasha, it's like, oh, shit. Heard this Walter Ilana Dragunov match is amazing. Still haven't seen it. Um, Roman Reigns versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan. I think I might have saw that. Kenny Maker versus Brian Danielson. Kenny Maker versus Ray Phoenix. Edge versus Seth Rollins. Nokata versus Will Ospreay. My match of the year for 2021 would be goddamn Steve Anthony versus APOC. Faction of the year. Well, this is real simple because the faction of the year was Southern Royalty. They say it's the inner circle, which, I mean, I like Sammy Guevara. I like Ortiz and Santana. Hager, I'm there with and Jericho. Just, I don't give a shit about it anymore. The Elite, Nick and yeah, fuck the Elite. The Bloodline, don't give a shit. Bullet Club, yeah, who, who the fuck's in the Bullet Club anymore? The other ones are the Hurt Business Country Unit, Donna Del Mondo, and the Faction in the Globe. Okay. Tag Team of the Year. Young Bucks. Yeah, fuck that. Lucha Brothers. Okay. Usos, yeah. New Day, yeah. Natalia and Tamina. I am not kidding here. 33% for voters. Some of the top voters do not capture a run up front include Natalia and Tamina. Who the fuck? Out there was room for Natalia and Tamina. Natalia, great wrestler. Tamina? I mean, I can understand the Bucks getting some votes because, you know, but. RK Bro, the Mysteriosos, FTR, and MSK. Woman of the Year, Britt Baker. Bianca Belair. Okay, cool. Mickey James, yeah. Deanna Perrazzo, yeah. And the other ones who didn't show up, Thunder Rosa, Sasha Banks, Roxy, and Charlotte Flair. Man, Charlotte getting shit on, which is always good to see. Wrestler of the Year, Kenny Omega. I don't know on this. Because this is what I don't like. There's a woman of the year, but I don't think there's a man of the year. So if they have the woman of the year, why? And Bel Air had a great year. I'll give her that. Look how small the percentage is. All right, Roman, Bel Air, Biggie. And the other ones that didn't have Brian Danielson, Deanna Perrazzo, Cody Rhodes, Shingo, and Jonathan Grisham. Man. Jonathan Grisham for. 2020 was my wrestler of the year. Okay, Stanley Western Award, Ron Simmons and Terry Funk. You know, two just two of my favorites. I'll tell this Ron Simmons stories real quick. In 1992, I if my it was my birthday present that year, that summer, in June, I think it was. Might have been job. I think it was June of WCW came to Mobile Civic Center, which was not that far from where I grew up. That's about 20 minute drive at the most. With Beach Blast 92. Well, we get there and I have seats. Fourth or fifth row right next to the entrance ramp. Like, if you're on the ramp facing the ring, we're on the left. You're in the ring facing the ramp, facing the entrance way, we're on the right. I'm going to use this spot. Look for a uh, shaved head and a big, long goatee. I'm easy to spot. They're in the cactus team match. But four shows started direct, like, across, you know, across the ring, through all the seats, where the that the first row of the risers, they had, a, like, an elevated platform built where they had, like, a wheelchair lift. And then they're... I was told this by somebody on a truth as well, but WCW either sold extremely cheap or given to, they had this, uh, like, 
home for mentally handicapped uh, for special needs. I think it was mostly physically handicapped people. They and they were all sitting over there on the thing. Well, we got in there, you know, as soon as they opened the doors, and they'd already let the people on that platform in, and all the faces would take time to go over there for a few minutes and talk to them, take pictures and shit. Ron Simmons stayed there from when we got in the building until like a couple of minutes before the dark match started, if I remember right. And the best thing I remember, and I got a picture of this, and I got to dig it out. It's blurry as shit because I'm across the arena. It's Mobile Civic Center. Is Ron Simmons. I look over there and there's Ron Simmons giving up like a piggyback ride. He's got this guy up on his shoulder. I think it was a guy, it's a good distance, but it was a little person, midget, whatever you want to call it, dwarf. And he's just running around with all the shoulder. And I was just like, oh God, look at this. Give me a second. Sorry about that. I'm doing laundry for the wrestle show tomorrow because I have to pick out my outfit. You, know? you, gotta, you, gotta, you can't just, you know, show up with some old t shirt and some jeans, you know. You, know, you got to be, you got to dress up for a show. Ron Simmons and Terry Funk. Oh, man. It sucks. I've only seen Terry Funk one time, and that was at an indie show out in Texas. He took on uh, Dustin Rhodes. Great match. You know, I just never I never got to see a lot of Terry Funk as a kid. And I don't really think, <laughs> well, no. I probably saw some Ron Simmons in WWE, WWF as acolytes. Because for a while there, anytime they came to Beaumont or Houston, when I lived out in Texas, they came out to Beaumont or Houston area. For a, not for a house show, but like a TV taping. You know, Raw, SmackDown, whatever. Or a um, pay-per-view I went from 90, I started going 98 and I quit. And, well, I went to the ECW house show in Beaumont. I was on Saturday and the pay-per-view was on a Sunday that Ben Wano showed. And that's the last WWE events I've been to. And we got, you know, the writing awards. I have to go through all that. The Forbidden Doors kicked up in WWE Everything's Talent Development Approach. New Japan introduces IWGP World Title. CM Punk returns to the ring. Streaming revitalizes in the circuit. Ring of Honor feature still in question. Yeah, that's true. Goodbye, WWE Network. Hello, Peacock. Well, at least in the States. And I, 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 I had dropped WWE Network. I had WWE Network for a long time. And then I got to where I wasn't really watching it. But my father, once in a while, didn't want to watch some more wrestling, so I kept it for that. And also, a good friend of mine who I knew he just couldn't afford the his his he was on disability. His finances were very strained just to survive. And he got him a Roku. And I was like, "Well, dude, look, here's my password. Here's my son for WWE Network. You know, watch as much as you want. I paid it for him to watch and my dad. Well, when that buddy of mine died. I canceled it. My dad was like, "I got to do TV, we got YouTube. You're good. You know, dad, your dad wrestling is wrestling is wrestling." Yeah, he knows WWE is big league, and that's about all. <laughs> he loves them, New Japan. But when they went to Peacock, I'm like, eh, yeah, whatever, yeah. I wasn't even interested. The only thing I was interested in on Peacock was that Punky Groove revamp. Then I saw the price, I'm like, yeah, five bucks. And I ended up getting Peacock, and I ended up using Peacock a lot, but not for WWE stuff. I watched, like, we just went and um, started the miniseries and worked our way all through all the seasons of the Battle of the remake. Yeah, now we're doing um, Eureka. It was it's half the price, and that's what five bucks for the one with the ads. And here's the thing: I've never got an ad on like a pay per view at all that I remember. But like TV shows where the adverts supposed to be to have them, so that ain't bad. And then we had the title change for the year, and we got like you know Triple A Mega Championship, which is their big belt. Yes, El Hijo del Vecino, which is the Vecino you've seen on like MOW in the last recently, defeated Samurai del Sol. That's Kalisto from WWE. Five way match to fill the vacate title, vacated by Kenny Omega, also featured Bandito, Jay Lethal, and Bobby Fish. The Reina de Reina's title. This is the Queen of Queens. It's their women's shit. Uh, this is the one that Deanna Perrazzo has now because Mickey James has the Impact Women's. Deanna Perrazzo has this and some other belt. I don't give a shit about the Latin American. Uh, this one, FDR, had the World Tag Team title. Uh. All Elite and yeah, Adam Page, Benny Omega. It's had it from Sheeta forever. Lucha Brothers defeated the Bucks, yeah. TNT. Uh, Miro defeated Brown, and then he got defeated by Sammy Guevara. And the FTW, not officially recognized by AW Brian Cage, got beat by Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks, local guy, kind of sort. All Japan. All Japan Triple Crown. Jake Lee defeated Yuma Ayogi. That also included Kuto Mayahara. Uh, CMLL, the world title. 
Genario defeat Ultima Guerrero. Man, no, don't be defeating Ultima Guerrero. Cyberfire, which is a uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, Tokyo Joshi Pro, and DDT Pro. I don't know anything about Pro Wrestling Noah. It's one of those where I'm never really watched it. Dragon Gate, another one. Dude, okay, look at this guy. For a second, I thought, man, that Jimmy Snuka? You're, I don't know a lot about screen feds. Impact, now here we go. So I walk, Impact is probably the best known of all the wrestling feds I watch every week to most fans that are hardcore fans. I mean, Impact or Ring of Honor, and I don't watch Ring of Honor every week now because they're in reruns, but... Yeah, Kenny defeated Rich Swan. Christian defeated Kenny. Josh Alexander defeated Christian. And Moose defeated Josh Alexander. We watched this. And my buddy Kobe, go to Bison Media Productions, his 25th birthday party. We had the night of the damn pay-per-view. And that was the thing. Like, everybody came over. It was a housewoman birthday party. And, like, there was about five, six of us guys sitting in the living room, kitchen, watching this pay-per-view. And all the women, all the ladies, and a few of the other guys were out back drinking and doing smells and shit. Knockouts. Mickey defeated Don, Deanna Peraza. X Division. Ace Austin defeated TJP. Josh Alexander, Josh Alexander defeated Ace Austin. Trey Miguel defeated El Fantismo. Triple threat to fill the title vacated by Josh Alexander. And also included Steve Macklin. Who I think is like the forgotten son of James Jackson based out of Adelia, Louisiana. World Tag Team Championship. Finn Juice defeated the Good Brothers. Violent by Design defeated Finn Juice. Good Brothers defeated Violent by Design. Also included Follow Ball and No Way Jose. And Rich one will I forgot Noah Hill say had a short run of impact. Knockout tag team. Digital media. This was kind of neat. It was a six-way tournament. He had Jordan Grace, who won. John Siler, Chelsea Green, Crazy Steve, followed by Madison Rain on the Indies. Lee Moriarty defeated War. It's a good match. Moriarty got defeated by Wheeler Yuta and Wheeler Yuta Stella Shelley. The Pan-African World Diasporia Wrestling Championship, Trisha Dora. I don't, I don't get that. There's, there's something there I'm not getting. And then we got the danger where Nick Gage defeated Ricky Shane Page. Nick Gage got beat by Mark McInerney. got beat by John Moxley. The Ultra Violent Championship. It was what's on uh, Alex Lone again. Tag team, which was G River and Jimmy Lloyd. And the second gear crew, now the Briscoes got it. Shimmer. CC started the belts forever. Nevea defeated High End and Zoe Scott defeated him. Lee. The Crash. Ah. Oh. El Hio Di Vecchino defeated Bandito, included Dragon Lee and Willie Matt. Major League Wrestling, Hammerstone defeated Jacob Two. Great one. Uh, Alex Kane defeated Myron Reed in a five way to fill the title vacated by Hammerstone. World Middleweight, Leo Rush defeated Myron Reed. Myron Reed defeated Leo Rush. Tajiri defeated Myron Reed. And I'm not seeing Tajiri defend that belt in forever, it feels like. World Tag Team, Los Sparks defeated Von Eric's 5150 defeated Sparks. IWA Caribbean Championship. Holiday, Richard Holiday defeated Savio Vega. Kim Mortez defeated Richard Holiday. New Japan. Kota Bushi defeated El Desperado for the World Heavyweight. Then Will Ospreay beat Ibushi. Then Shingo beat Okada because Ospreay, like, he was hurt or something? National NWA World Champion Trevor Murdoch defeated Nick Aldis. And Aldis had that title forever. Camille defeated Serena Deeb. National Adonis defeated Trevor Murdoch. Uh, then Adonis defeated JTG in a tournament final to <laughs> fill the title of AK Adonis. World Tag La Rebellion, which is Mecha Wolf and Bestia XXX, defeated Aaron Stevens and J.R. Kratos. I don't know who J.R. Kratos actually is. World Women's Tag Team Championship. The Hex defeated Kylan King and Red Velvet. Okay. And TV Ship Tyrus be de defeated the Pope. The Pope's good. Tyrus sucks. Ring of Honor. Bandito defeated Rush and John Gershon defeated Jay Lethal. Filling the title vacated by Bandito. The women's champion is, of course, Roxy should be Miranda Elise. Pure champion is Josh Woods. Defeated John Gershon Tag Team. Uh, it's on the Briscoes. Six Man was on Shane Taylor. No, the Righteous had it. TV. Was on Rep Titus. Who knows? On Stardom. I don't give a shit about Stardom. Ah, it's probably good wrestling. I just have not been into Joshi in forever. WWE, another one I just should have had. The Miz had the belt. Wow. And Bobby Lashley and the Big E. Okay. Women, we had Rhea Ripley, Charlotte, Nikki Ash, Charlotte, Becky Lynch. Yeah. Tag Team Champions, don't give a shit. US. 
The little feet of Lashley, Shavis defeat the River, Damian Priest defeat the Sheamus. Universal, Roman Reigns held it forever. Women's, uh, Bianca Belair defeated Banks. Lynch defeated Belair. Charlotte traded belts. SmackDown, tag team. Dirty Dogs, I don't know who that is. Mysterios, who says, eh. Look at this 24 7 title. Any pictures. Oh, Tom Lawler with the Canadian tuxedo. I had to explain that to my father one day. He had a denim shirt on and the damn jeans. Like, nice Oh, look at it. Matt Cardona and Lovely Clutches, the GC. Championship belt after upsetting Nick Gage at the show, but in Atlantic City fans and tennis were not pleased as evidenced by that bunch of projectile semi empty bottles and cans covering the canvas. And then we got this one. Damien Priest rips off Sheamus's protective face mask. Let's see. And memories from all the different writers and stuff. Is Chris Zellner listed? I know he works for a disorder. And then all the people passed, Brody Lee, Daphne, Danny Hodge, Butch Reed, Bobby Eaton, Paul Longruff, New Jack, Jody Hamilton, Del Wilkes. Uh, that's the assassin of the Patriot. Captain Ed George, Jimmy Rave, Josephus, Jim Crocker Jr., Dominic DiNucci, Ethel Brown, Johnny Fazer, Reggie Parks, Barry Orton, Dino, Melissa Coates, Ryan Sakota, Andy Ball Jr., John Renesso, Eddie Crawford, Benny Valentine, Steve Lawler, Butcher Hughes, Royce Prophet, Mount, Mount, oh shit, Mountain Man got listed. Good, good. Uh, Mountain Man is one of those guys. A little bit in the big leagues, like some WWE, some AEW work, but he has been around the Deep South for ever and ever and ever. Imagine a more charismatic, slightly better in the ring, slightly more agile until like the last few years of his career. Uncle Elmer. Sorry, like somebody ever with Uncle Elmer, you know. That's Mountain Man. I, I, I didn't catch that. Cyborg. Laws of the Prize, Super Porter, Irish Pratt Barrett, Britt Brown. Ken Casey, Austin Fury, Don Canodal, Chris Yumblow, Jack Lanza, Angelo Mosca, Judy Bagwell, Zeus, Tony Lister, Rusty Brooks, the Yete, Natasha the Hatchet Lady, Pac Singh, Bobby Davis, Paul Varlins, Big Jim Anderson, Jim Davies, and Jerry Anderson. And then we got our ratings. And this is not for the year, you know. But let's see. Any, any cool fed showing up? Oh, we got Mexico. Vikinos, number one, Volador Jr., Mystico, three, Psycho Clown, four, Echinero, I don't know how you say that, five, El Terrible, six, El Cabanaro, is that? Barbero, El Cabanaro, Barbero, Barbero, Cabanaro, I'm thinking that's him. Seven, eight, Sobrano Jr., nine, Star Jr., and Lance Jr., ten. And we got a little cartoon. Okay. Nine issues up for 35 bucks or 18 for 60 You know what? I'm really tempted to go ahead and just subscribe because I do enjoy these. You, know. you love to hate it, Jay Gard. I love me some PWI, and yes, I, I like how, man, when I was a kid, they really did not break kayfabe at all. Like, at all. And most of the interviews were made up, and half the writers were made up. Like, it blows my mind to learn as I got over this hundred was fake. I got a little funny story if I wrap this one up. This is years ago, it's 2010. At the time, we had dial-up internet, so I could only get on late at night when we knew nobody was calling. We only had one phone line. And I would still pick up PWI here. And remember, you can still find it. Really, really, like grocery stores and shit. Now i got to go to Walgreens. Well, I went to an indie show in town, and I sent in the results to PWI. And I got an email back from somebody else there. I don't remember who it was. I'd have to look through my emails. But... And the email address was like Liz Hunter at PWI. And I come kind of there like, you got to format it this way. We'll post it. And I think they ended up posting my stuff. I don't know. I ain't bothered sending in results. I should start sending in results. I know for a little while there, a couple of issues where I had a uh, local fed that they still run a show here. And I remember they, I went to the Great Southern 8 recently. Pro Wrestling Ego was like in their. I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. Let me back. Like this shit, the smaller indies you know, section. Yeah, see, Chris's owner's part of it. But, yeah, they were listed there in their top ten for a little bit. But I might end up dropping, excuse me, $35. $35 and change for nine issues. That's not bad because these are eight bucks a pop and I'll buy them. But I'm out, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that.